Chelsea Sexton is an expert when it comes to electric cars. She's also an industry advisor on them and was the consulting producer on the movie Revenge of the Electric Car. And Chelsea, it's great to get a chance to talk to you again. Always good to catch up with you. I'm very specifically interested in your knowledge about where the cost of batteries for electric cars are going. I know uh, it used to be prohibitive, but the industry is making tremendous progress. Walk us through a bit of where that is. Sure. Right now, everyone's using some flavor of lithium ion batteries. And we've known for some years that they've been getting better and cheaper by about 7% a year. But recent data actually says that, that, that it's getting even better than that, that it's dropping a little bit faster. So around 2007, it was about to, about $1,000 per kilowatt hour, which made you know a leaf battery pack around $24,000 just in the cells. So nearly the entire car was battery cost. Uh, to now, it's down around 280, and just in the next few years, 2017, 2018, it's expected to reach around 230 dollars per kilowatt hour, which is a little bit below actually the 250 threshold at which everyone's thinking electric cars become um, on parity with gasoline cars. So just in the next few years, even though we're already seeing good prices and great lease prices, the actual cost will be roughly equal to gas cars just in the next couple of years. Now, I saw Secretary Chu, Energy Secretary Chu, a few years ago when he was still Energy Secretary, say that the Department of Energy had set a, t- a cost target of $125 per kilowatt hour, and that he was saying that's when it absolutely would match the cost of an internal combustion engine. So, and you're saying it's more like 250 What's the discrepancy here? Well, I think everyone's making their best guess to some degree, but part of it's also what we're seeing as electric cars. So there's a difference between sort of the 100-mile, everyday commuter kind of entry-level car. And, and of course, everyone is aiming at even getting below that 250 or 230 threshold. But there's also the more premium and luxury end, which is what we're largely seeing enter the market in the next several years. The, the German automakers, to some degree, uh, Tesla trying to bring new vehicles. And then also we're seeing you know the Korean automakers and some other new entrants. But largely, we're seeing at the higher end of vehicles at this point. So that that implies that there's a little bit more uh, cost that can be absorbed. It's sure. not just about the most commodity level car. No, that's a great point because when I say internal combustion engine, you can talk about twin turbo V8s with intercoolers and you know right. uh, double injectors and very expensive versus say just a, a fairly simple four cylinder engine. But exactly. but next question. How are they making these improvements? Is it uh, in the batteries themselves? Is it just the volume or what? It's a combination. It's it's all of those things. Yeah, certainly the, the leading uh, um, battery manufacturers, and that's usually the LGs and the Panasonics and the Samsungs of the world, are you know certainly innovating in slight tweaks to anode and cathode to get costs down, but also in format and manufacturing. Volume helps quite a bit. And so the, the more vehicles are produced and, those, and the, frankly, the more other gadgets that could use similar chemistry, the, the more the cost comes down. So that's part of why we see somebody like Elon building a big old factory in Nevada, because he plans to use the same batteries for both his vehicles, but also solar city and home storage and a bunch of different applications. And he's not the first to think that way. He's just getting the most press for it. Other, other companies have built their factories already. And I know Elon has said he will get to that $125 cost per kilowatt hour. There's another company out there, too, coming out with a solid state battery, SACD3. Do you know much about them, and what do you think of their chances? Yeah, SACD is one we've been looking at for quite a while. If you've ever spent any time with Anne-Marie Sastry, she's an absolute brilliant little spitfire (laughs) and you you come away always believing she's going to do exactly what she says she's going to and and you know woe to who anyone who believes otherwise but they've actually been mostly starting as many battery factory battery companies do on the academic end end of things and raise a professor Uh, and so she's just now starting to really commercialize her technology and just got a huge investment from Dyson known for vacuums but obviously home appliances and other things and in theory that could be ported over to vehicles as well. A lot of this is really promising chemistry that just simply takes a bunch of years to scale up to a degree that somebody like an auto manufacturer, and frankly, all of their lawyers, are comfortable putting in lots of cars housing families. 
So what you're saying is it seems to be, let, let's say, at the luxury end of the market, battery costs are going to be right where they need to be in what before the decade's out, and yeah. maybe even at the bottom end of the market in about a decade's time. Yeah, if that. I mean, certainly it will continue to come down. And there are these diverging paths between trying to get the basic everyday car that will serve a lot of people at 100, 120 miles to get that into a more um, affordable end, so below $25,000, $20,000 into the teens. And at the same time, some manufacturers are trying to continue to flesh out the longer range end of vehicles. So we are going to see sort of both ends working toward the middle a little bit over the next several years. But it's really promising that costs are already falling faster than we expected and that they're continuing to do so. The outlook is actually pretty good. With battery costs falling faster than anyone expected, that's probably a good place to wrap up this discussion. Thank you so much, Chelsea Saxton. Anytime. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles.